I was on my way to the United States one September in 20, 2016, and I was on my way to receive the 120 Under 40 Award, which was recognizing a new generation of leaders in family planning. And at the time, my work as a health communicator was being recognized. I had no idea, really. I had no grand plan at this. I had a cell phone, some mobile data, and time. And so I used my skill and expertise to talk about sex online and use media as an advocacy tool. And so this, for me, felt really great because it was like an emotional high five. You know, when your peers are looking, you don't even know they're looking, and they're saying, hey, girl, we think you're doing a great job. That really felt nice. And I remember carrying that excitement with me on that flight from Johannesburg via Istanbul to Washington. I settled into my seat. Dinner was served. Everything was going according to plan. And the fidgeting passengers all had settled down. The lights had dimmed. I put my eye mask on and just took that exhale as I sank into my reclined seat. And I remember saying to the universe, my, what will the next phase of my journey look like? Because I felt that my life wouldn't be the same after this. And I literally put it out there, give me a sign, give me a sign. And in between this half awake, half asleep moment, I heard the captain make an announcement in Turkish, which I completely missed, but I did get the English part of it. And he said, um, there is a medical situation in flight, and can a medical personnel make yourself identified and known to the crew? And I mean, obviously, like an instinct, I jumped up, and I put my hand up and tried to get the attention of the crew member. I could see her standing at the corner of my eye. And immediately, as I, said, as I did that, she brushed me off in dismissal, sort of to suggest, why are you distracting me? I'm tasked with finding a doctor for an emergency. And, and I was taking a little bit aback, but there was this knot in my stomach um, that took me to a place familiar. The rush of adrenaline through my veins, my heart was palpating really fast, and I remember my mouth getting so dry, and the, the, my eyes had got so sharp and acclimatized back to the light in the cabin. And I remembered even as a black girl growing up in apartheid South Africa, attending white schools immediately post-apartheid, how certain judgments were passed upon me and this body because it's black, and certain assumptions were made about what I can or cannot do because of what I look like. Even as a black woman, a medical doctor in corridors and hospitals in South Africa, in Johannesburg, having had patients look at you in the eye and tell you, I don't want you to care for me because you are black. And so I had to sit with this discomfort, this anxiety. It ejected me back to my seat, which was still reclined. And I remember sitting and, and, and telling myself, I need to sit with this and make sense of what it means. And I started to think of the other black bodies that I had left back home, the other black women that look like me, that sound like me, that, oh, that they also don't get the benefit of the doubt because of what they look like. I started to think about the systems of oppression, the violent society that we navigate, the different spaces that we occupy, the white supremacy that disguises itself as foreign aid in my land in South Africa, the white savior complex that disguises itself as allyship and tells me to be grateful because other Africans are not getting what I'm getting, the patriarchy that further burdens the black child with purity and virginity for the benefit of old men. I asked myself, where does a black lesbian woman go who's beaten and raped because she's black and a lesbian, with no access to post-trauma care? Where does the outdoor black sex worker go for occupational health and safety? The young black woman who's requiring modern contraception choices and safe abortion care, where does she go? the transgender woman who needs affirming health care. And so just to let you know, they did go for a white man, obviously, who's a psychologist to sort the, this incident in flight. And I arrived in Washington with a certain sense of audacity and clarity that I would center my work as a sexual and reproductive justice doctor, yes, medical doctor, and to center these black women and our lived experiences to make sure that global health policy is centered on human rights but that the rights and policies are directly translatable into equitable and accessible healthcare. Because as a doctor, as a black woman, 
I know for sure the intersections of gender, class, migration, undocumented migrant labor, different body liabilities mean that for us, the right to choose is simply not enough. Thank you.